All right, so I will uh, go ahead and get started um, June the 10th. And uh, us as usual, saying our prayer first. So asking for protection, for uh, good health for everyone, good vibration, for peace, for um, abundance in love in benevolence, forgiveness, and everything else. Dear Brother Jesus, as we gather here today to learn from the spirit teachings, from your loving message, and from each other life experience, we ask you please to come besides us now. Lead us on our study today, on the days ahead of us, and through the time mostly through the time when our mind cannot cope. Help us to find peace and calming inner thoughts. You hold us safe, dear Jesus, and please do the same for all members of this group, for our mentors here with us today, for our family members, our houses, relatives, and all of those crossing our mind right now as well as all of those in need the ones that we do not know but we know for sure that is not forgotten thank you jesus stay with us here today and always and so be it amen <clears throat> amen and all stories have happy endings evidently <laughs> so uh talking about stories so this is the part two for astro city so we had a part one and um i hope we will finish the the, the discussions on astro city today i um i would just pass by the slides that we had already uh covered uh, if you remember, this is a book from 1944, so it was right before the Great uh, Second War, uh, World War, Dude. and um, yeah, so, and um, it was, uh, uh, this book was not very well uh, received, um, even for, uh, when we say very well received, not we are not talking about the Brazilian society at that time, we, which was massive. I mean, most of them, uh, I want to say almost 100% Catholic. Uh, but uh, even for the Spiritists, this book was not very well received because until then, um, we all had this idea of uh, heavens and hell and you know once we transition and as as long as we do good then as we transition then everything is going to be fine and 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 such so and here comes this guy andre luis code name uh, is a code name andre luis uh many people they believe it is a code name for this uh known scientist brazilian scientist uh, Carlos Chagas, I put it over here, uh, a drawing from whoever uh, is able to can see, like a, a cartoon. And this is Carlos Chagas uh, when he was alive. So uh, many people believe, for, not only because of they are very uh, similar to each other, but uh, there are some other facts as well. But anyway, this is not important. What is important is the message that Andre Luis brought to us. Uh, and it was like a revelation because so many other things um, uh, became so, uh, how can I say? Um, uh, it was not a shock, but uh, we became more and more familiar with what Andre Luis called spiritual realm series. So that was his his uh, task with Chico Xavier to write books about the spiritual realm and to tell us exactly, uh, not exactly, but at least from his perspective, from his experience, how and what exactly happened to him 
in, in his process as he transitioned to the uh, spiritual realm. So we talk about astral cities and you know where some of them are located. Uh, we talk about all these um, the layers or the dimensions of the spiritual realm, you know, from this inferior uh, umbra or abyss all the way to superior astral realm, you know, there. And they say, the spirits say, okay, so there is not really a very uh, clear uh, way to define. It depends on the frequency, it depends on the vibration. And, um, but again, the lower our vibration, then we we know exactly where we are going to and the higher the vibration, then we know exactly where we are going to. So um, not really rocket science is very much uh, common sense. Um, any any comment on the way that the astral city is organized? Anything? And, and I think it's important this discussion and especially talking about organization of the city and some aspects of the city and some aspects of the experiences that Andrea Luis had because the book is way more rich in those details than the movie, evidently, as always, right? So it's impossible to put everything in the movie. So, but one of the things that I think is very, very interesting and in the book is covered very well is how that city is organized. So as Andre Luis is working and transitioning from one department to another, um, so then he's explaining more or less how each department um, uh, functions, right? So any comment in there, in there or anything, any question? No? Everybody's up. Andre, uh, uh, Luis, <laughs> I want to say Andre Luis. Luis, you want to say anything? No, I think this is all right. It's a good description of what happened when, after he was rescued, right? But later on, maybe we can talk a little bit before he was rescued, but this is another yeah. part of your explanation. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because I would like to, to, I have a question for you prior to his uh, transition. So, um, okay, so last time we stopped right here uh, and uh, I put it over here suicidal because I want us to remember, and, and, and this is something that I guess Luis would like to talk about, why suicidal and why he was received as a suicidal even though he was not, um, he didn't commit any suicide. He, he, he died out of complications when he was having a, a, a surgery, okay? So I will uh, play this, uh, it's just a trailer. So just to remind us about some of the aspects, some of the, the, the elements that we, we see in the movie. And I hope you, you all can hear. I mean, it's not so important. You are devastated. You Respirava, sentia fome, frio e medo. So I want to stop here and say, okay, so he's saying that he's hungry. He found himself in this place, dark place, and he is hungry. How come a spirit can be hungry? Well, it is, we are whatever we have in our mind, right? It's not because we transitioned, we left the physical body behind us, 
that we will not think that we still need uh, some things. And in his case, he was still too attached to the physical reality, to this, uh, to the surface, right? To his uh, previous life and uh, not realizing he doesn't <coughs> need those kind of nutrients anymore. He doesn't need food anymore, but is it still is something that in his mind, he feels like. So that uh, idea is so strong. It does stick so hard in his mind that it is uh, hard for him to hard for him to believe that um, he's not hungry. You know, uh, evidently at that at that point he, he he knew. Okay, so I'm dead, but how come I'm I'm still that I'm I'm already dead? If I can touch me, I see this. Oh, by the way, that cancer on his stomach. It was growing, you know, it was growing and he, he was feeling in pain. It was something painful. Well, let's remember the, the, the discussion about Paris spirit and how all our thoughts, all our, our ideas uh, does stick to the Paris spirit and then it's like a reality for us. Sorry, hi, Cynthia. Go ahead. Yes, this is as this is as I understand it that you, when you cross over, that you your mind is still functioning, and you you think this is what it is, and you feel hunger, and you feel all these things because you you this is where you still are. You have not understood where you are. Yeah. And um, th yes, because um, there was something where this. Um, woman said that this gardener who came, he still thought that he had to dig gun water and so on, when all he could do is with thought. Exactly. That he could, exactly, yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, um, and uh, as we can see, we'll, we'll continue on, but um, the movie doesn't explain what happens, uh, it's something very uh, quick, it's very fast what happens, but the movie doesn't explain, but in the book it does explain very well uh, what exactly is going on. Uh, but for now, let's keep this idea, you know, everything, our thoughts, everything that we do, good or bad, is going to be ripped, like, you know, um, a photograph or something in our Paris spirit and you know we will look the way that we uh we think we are and uh, according to the consequences of our acts and according to what we did with our body and then we'll see the consequences in the Paris spirit okay so So what he's, he's experiencing now, what he's looking at is a rescue. So you can see before the rescue, so there are some people talking to each other and uh, asking forgiveness or some of them praying. So when you got to that point, when they get to that point and then, yes, they are no longer in that vibration. They are no longer uh at the same uh frequency of that dark place meaning they're ready to be rescued right so that's what he's looking at he's looking at those people forgiving each other and now they are at the point that yeah they can be rescued
there you go. This is the thing that I, the, the 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 part that I would like to explain because the movie doesn't explain, but in the book we 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 see. You see these people. So these folks over here, they are the spirits of the folks who Andre Luis was uh meeting every time he was going to a bar you know um so he was meeting this lady and some of other friends this guy over here uh his um his father he uh he he had some properties uh some land uh and uh some of these guys um you know working on that land they were not really uh very nice people as a matter of fact this specific one i believe it is a friend of his father who was uh in debt and uh so andre luis father uh loaned some money to this guy and after a while uh, this guy was in very bad financial situation and he was asking a little bit more time for him to pay for his debt because you know he was in a in a terrible uh, condition and he didn't have much money to sustain his uh, family well andre luis um did encourage his father to go ahead and execute the debt the the you know and uh and then because of that that guy uh went to bankruptcy you know so he ruined an entire family because of greed you know and for him it was like he was not doing anything wrong you know the guy knew the risk his father has already waited for the guy to pay for his debt, but still, you know, it, it didn't happen. So it was on his father's uh, right to go ahead and do what he did. So, so all these folks, it's interesting because they are at the same uh level of frequency same level of vibration as andre luis so that's why they are there in the same place they can they can see they meet each other so they are in the same they go to the same place okay And then all these guys there calling him uh, suicidal. So Luis would like to to comment. Oh yes, thank you. Uh, it's the first. This just for this first part could fit a good seminar about yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Let's yes. Let's take for example only the rescue part. In the rescue part, we see what how how this kind of rescue is made or done in the spirit realms because we need mediums there. The mediums have to exhale ectoplasm there mm -hmm. for the old, for the higher spirits to be able to materialize and rescue people on, on that place. So mediumship release systems uh, are not only practiced here on earth. They are practiced all the time to, to do these uh, kind of uh, tasks uh, in the spirit realms, right? So we need mediums there and as you can see, some people, they gather, maybe they people that work in the lower zones, helping the people, they get together, they pray, they materialize the, the, those spirits that are higher. These the, the, the higher spirits protect the, uh, you know, the, the, the group of spirits that want to help to, to rescue these people. But of course, they, uh, the system of rescuing is very interesting. It doesn't matter if you are... A, Right, reaching out your hand and asking and begging, please help me. They go into your mind and they see if you are sincere, if you're on the level, if you're honest, 
If you're not, if you still don't really want to repent, you're not rescued. That's why Andre Luis, to be rescued, it took about eight years after he you know, cleansed and he washed away all his pride as a, uh, an earthly doctor, all his greed. So he burned all his dirt and his uh, bad sides there. And after these things went away, he was able to be helped by these guys from the other side or from, from higher above, right? So this, this part we could study very much because this part is the, it shows one of the systems that is very present in spiritual, in spiritual healing, in spiritual release, right? For us to understand how things really work. And, uh, and something, some spiritists at, at the time of the book, they got a little bit outraged because they said, oh, how come a guy like that was an honest doctor with a good family, good wife, and so on and so forth. But the problem, people, is the age of the spirit. Sometimes we are very aged <laughs> and we, if we cannot just play in life as anyone else in the world. Yeah, with that, because it comes re responsibility. Respons responsibility yeah. is much higher for somebody like that, right? So uh, that's why you know, I remember in the, in the gospel, I see must remember more than I do, uh, the, um, uh, John the Baptist, when he, in his uh, uh, preaches, in his lectures, he used to say, look, for you, right? Times have arrived. And for you, the ax is already at the root of the trees, right? The Apostle Paul also said that for you, the time, the end of times has already arrived. So it, the, the, the end of times depends on your spiritual age, right? So if you are a grown-up person spiritually, it's, you better not play in this world. Don't waste your time with, you know, uh, odds and ends because uh, the price can be something like that, that... <laughs> Andre Luis lived through. Okay, that's it. Yeah, I get. Yeah, very important to say that, Luis, because um, I guess is one of the main messages in the Astro City book. Is the first one uh, of the series is exactly uh, how uh, shocking was for Andre Luis to realize that after living such a honored life like he did, right? He was so concerned about his apparent life and he forgot completely about his spiritual life, his inner life, not knowing that that was exactly the one driving his journey, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. yeah. So it was. Uh, it is very important to say because it was. It was him saying, telling from his experience. Hey, I. I was not. I was just an average person. I was not really um, making plans to do anything evil. I was not uh, doing anything evil on purpose. I was doing what I thought it was right. What I, I was fighting for things that. He thought that it was right. And yet it took him eight years to clarify, to clear his mind, to uh, like uh, Luis was saying, to repent, right? So even though he was suffering, he was uh, hunger, he was uh, in pain. At some point in the book, uh, he says, he mentioned something that, um, he could remember um, phrases, pieces of prayers in his mind. He could remember the name of God, etc. But that was, still was not enough until it was in his heart, right? Yes. And there's something I'd like to point out. He started meditating about religion for mm -hmm. the first time after yeah. Uh, he, after he was born here, <laughs> because <laughs> look, after when you live through the situation like that, 
religion, the way we think here on earth is so poor. And philosophy too, because there, it doesn't mind which philosophy, which religion, whatever, you are there, you are in that plight, and you just can't go back. <laughs> you can't rewind. It's something really very hard on you. And so he said, for example, there's a phrase here, he said, never had the religious question loomed so large before my eyes. Principles, purely political, philosophical, and scientific, now seem to me of secondary importance to human life. And they are when you're leaving the situation. <laughs> And they are when you're living the situation. Although they were valuable acquisitions on earth, he continues, I had to admit that mankind was not made of transitory generations, but of immortal, uh, immortal, let me see, immortal spirits on their ascension to a glorious destination. I was beginning to realize that existence of one thing that stands above all that is material or intellectual, faith, a divine manifestation to man, such as an analysis, however, came too late for me. So this is, and he said, I was familiar with the Old Testament and had often read through the gospels, but I was forced to recognize that I had never researched the sacred writings with the light of my heart. Yeah, again, he was living just this apparent life, the, the outer life, if you will, because he, he he was one of those guys that believed that just going to church was enough. <laughs> yeah, the way we do. Maybe spiritualism, spiritism, Catholicism. Yeah. We like to go there and punch the card and then yes. we punch the card out and life goes on the way it has always been, right? So checking uh, in, checking out. What we've been and... learning here is to try to make a difference in this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I guess this book was, was the first one because of that reason. It was explaining, it was you know, outlining all these surprising elements for André Luiz and as an average person, I mean, I know he was a scientist, no scientist and you know, a high uh, status guy, but still an average person from a spiritual uh, perspective, and, um, you know, yet those things happen to him. Oh, by the way, there is another point that in the movie doesn't, they do not say, but you can infer that from the book, um, his father, about his father. Even though he was in a bad situation, Andrea Luis, he found himself in a bad situation once he transitioned, but he still didn't see his father for a while. And he didn't meet his father um, until in until he goes to Astro City and then he meets with his mother and his mother tell him news about the father saying that his father was in an even lower realm. <laughs> Right. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't think the book ever said um, if they rescued the father, but I know the mother was working on it. Right. Yes. One more, one, one more thing. This thing of lower zones and higher zones, it's something that we need to be very careful about because some spirits, they feel good in the lower zones. Mm -hmm. And they feel nice there. I'll give you an example. I, I used to ask myself when I was about 14 years old, more than four years ago, five years ago. Uh, <laughs> I used to ask myself, well, why, what makes uh, these lower zones like that? For example, he was running away from spirits that were laughing at him and they were, you know, uh, making fun of him there. So who are those guys who are happy in the lower zones and making fun of him? And they are, you know, riding like uh, rangers and beating people around. And then the question later on in my life came to me, the people that petrify their hearts, they feel good wherever they are. <laughs> Do you understand? And the... Uh, and Andre Luis at least had this uh, upshot thing for him. He had this 
positive point towards his soul because he was suffering and because he was sensitive to a bad place. But those who are pursuing him and are chasing him, and they, they are people who petrify their hearts in such a way that they feel good. So if you say, you are in the lower zones, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm the place that I like. <laughs> so that's just a, an opinion here. Luis, uh, I didn't get yeah. that. Would you explain that um, second to last bit? Since I didn't understand it, I can't write down and take notes. So I don't know what you said, and I don't understand the meaning. Uh, sorry. And I was saying that some, some spirits, if you try to convince them that they are living in a lower zone, they will say, no, I'm not. This is good. This place is fantastic. Right? And then Dre Luis found it as a lower zone because he was being pursued by other spirits. Right? He was being chased and he was being uh, laughed at. He was not feeling well because he, were, he had a little bit more sensitivity in his heart. So petrifying your heart is the dangerous pathway to be in places that you think are good ones, but actually in the end, uh, and this is something what the spirits from the higher realm try to convince us is that our place is not good. Some people say, uh, well, but some spiritist writings are kind of, uh, 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 they, they want to put you down. No, they want to convince us that we need to grow, we need to evolve. If we think that where you are in the spiritual situation we are now, uh, it's the best, right? we are going to make less effort than we usually do when we usually make to grow, right? So, and this is the point that they come there. For example, these higher spirits, they come down to the lower zones and may, many times they are, they are attacked, they are uh, ridicule, uh, ridiculed and so on and so forth because the people think, oh, I'm okay here, right? I'm all, I'm all right. Okay, Luis, I, I do have a question for you. So, mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, sometimes in those zones, in those dark zones, uh, the spirits, they, the higher spirits cannot be seen. Yeah. Because Most they of the, are, times. The, the, the lower ones, they, the, the, the spirits yes. um, in, the, in the lower vibration, they cannot see a higher vibration. That's exactly why. But in this case, in the book and in the movie, they show as everybody could see. Mm -hmm. right? That's what I was saying. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's why they have to materialize, right? To be seen in, the, in those, on those realms. We have to materialize. And that's why we use mediums there too, to do this, right? Mm -hmm. For example, I was a medium when once I was having a dream, I was a medium. I remember Me that I worked as a DMU too, because they need this kind of communication all the time. Yep. And when you, and that's why, for example, this group here, they're trying to one day, to, who knows, to set up a spirit release mediumistic group in America. It's gonna be wonderful because we have seen here in Brazil wonders, thousands of spiritist centers Doing this every night is so good for the mental health of the population, and it's and I think it made the the population be more uh, uh, loving, more caressing, mm -hmm. and things like this. Because uh, it happens that we, we need this kind of system, right? Materializing higher spirits for us to be helped by them, uh, and at, and at the same time we need to spiritualize ourselves a little bit more so that we can give way for them to help us, right? This yeah. is beautiful. And it, it goes along like this, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, the other thing also is when it happens that uh, those uh, spirits um, uh, living in such a lower vibration, when they are able to see those higher spirits, is because the higher spirits, they want to be seen, right? So they want to be... Uh, to be seen as a sign of, hey, look at this. Mm -hmm. This is also a possibility for you, you know. That, that you yes, have this higher, option. Yes. 
truly higher spirits, they just don't waste their time and the chances. When they come, it's because time has begun, has come to, to do something. It's the right, right time, yeah. Yeah, they don't do some things, you know, just at the spur of the moment. Let's try. No, they usually, yeah. when they come to do something, it's something that, okay, now there's no way out for you, guy. You're going to come with us. <laughs> yeah, I also, okay, so let me, let me show something here as well. Do you see that, um, Andre Luis, it's very hard to see, but <laughs> believe me, he has a beard. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a sign of time. Did you did you grasp that? There is so you know showing his hair being long, you know, long hair and beard, it is a sign that time is passing by. So Louise, would you like to comment on that? Because it's so close to yes, yeah. okay, yes. It's a spiritual, in all over the world nowadays, I think, it's a spiritual consensus about the fact that in the lower zones, we are living uh, exactly the same, almost the same way we live here on Earth. Mm -hmm. I remember David Fontana, Dr. David Fontana, at the end of the, the documentary school, I put this documentary on my channel yesterday. Uh, he's saying that... Um, it's another skull, okay, a second skull, if you want to take a look there, it's a beautiful documentary about the skull group. He's saying that the lower zones, they live, everybody, everybody lives very similar to the way we live here on earth. Yes, and uh, that's the point. We start, you know, having things and uh, having a physical life very similar to the one. But of course, even this physical life, very similar to the one we live here is attached to your vibration and to your mind situation. For example, if you don't remember to go to the bathroom, maybe you can spend 10 years without going to the bathroom. <laughs> Do you understand? Something, right? That's uh, because the spirits start having, that's a little bit confusing because, you know, many people, spiritists and spirituals, oh no, there in the spiritual realm is mind. We are all mind. Okay, we are yeah. mind, but we catalyze uh, other dimensional ma matter around us and we create this di uh, extra dimensional matter around us. So we create our environment. That's why uh, what uh, Dr. David Fontana said, according to his all his experience dealing with medium, said, well, we create the experience when we mm -hmm. are in the lower and the uh, and the higher realms or lower realms, right? The higher realms, of course, we can up, uh, up to what Alan Kardec called the very high spirits that live in a place that even the conception of matter there is something that goes, uh, becomes ineffable for us to conceive, you understand? All right, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Luis. And... Um... So the other aspect that we can see uh, in the book is the assistant's work. I think is a is a very nice uh, thing when uh, okay. So now Andre Luis is, is he is in Astro City. He has been rescued, and then he realized okay. So um, they rescue the spirits, they take the spirits to this ratification chamber to, you know, do the first aids and, you know, treatments on the spirits in bad condition. And then he says, okay, so I'm a doctor. I know everything about it. You know, I can, I can be of a great service here. <laughs> and then he, um, he had to, um, be a little bit uh, more humble, uh, hold a, a humble attitude uh, and learn that he knows everything about medicine on the physical body, but when it comes to the spirits, then he has a lot to learn. And evidently he could help. And, uh, but for his dismay, <laughs> it was his help, the help that was accepted was for him to be like, a housekeeper, you know, so as a very known and celebrated doctor when he was alive, 
then when he was he transitioned then he started all over again but this time from a very humble condition he was working in the ratification chamber uh helping the volunteers over there and uh, his job was actually to clean the ground in that place because again something that the, the movie doesn't say uh i mean it shows but then you can see and you will not understand but in the book it explains very well the they was the the rescued spirits they evidently they are in bad shape some of them they have a very uh the the peri spirit needs to be um reconditioned repaired if you will and uh but you know knowing how the mind is really leading the or guiding the living um evidently some spirits they took so long time to be rescued not because of the the higher beings but because of their condition it took so long for them to be rescued and they spent such a long time in those lower zones evidently there will be some consequences if you stay it's, it's like um now if we go to a very toxic place evidently there will be some consequences in our body right so if you spend such a long time in a toxic realm then your spirit your peer spirit will suffer this the consequences and that happened to this those rescued spirits so once they were in those um ratification chambers you know receiving the first aids and the treatments etc some of them they were not feeling well they were feeling as a matter of fact they were feeling very ill and some of them they were vomiting okay so what the heck how come a spirit can be vomiting uh well they were um expelling i do not know how to say but they were eliminating all those toxic elements you know they were kind of putting out everything that you know they took with them from those lower realms and there andre louise was you know cleaning all that mess because he had to <laughs> oh he had to start from you know from a very humble place he had to exercise humbleness right um uh what else uh, Luis, can you talk about the bonus orders? I know, I do not know how to say that in English. Bonus orders, the compensation, as you. Um, yes, uh, but before that, I'd like to understand to 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 show again the the thing of to be humble, right? Mm -hmm. He said that well, he's uh, when he talked to the minister looking for a job in Astro City, the minister was very straight to him. Said, look, you were a doctor. You had a diploma, you had a certificate, but uh, the basis for you to work here is, vir is virtual. Of course, I'm saying, I'm paraphrasing the guy. He said, it's virtual. So if you have still that kind of pride of your profession, things like that, it won't be of use here. So go first and do this kind of job for him. I remember, for example, Gandhi, when two American uh, American reporters came to they went, or researchers, and they came to talk to him to Gandhi, saying, "Gandhi, I would like to to know about to get to know about the great truths of the universe." And okay, would you like to? I'd like you to clean the trains for some time. Okay, to clean what toilets? Yes, I'd like you to clean toilets for some time. And then the guys start uh, cleaning toilets for some months, and and they come to a point that said, "Okay, let's." Let's have an uh, let's get a hold of the Gandhi again because we are, are you going to be doing this for all forever? And when they uh, got in touch with Gandhi again and said, "Okay, Gandhi, okay, we've been cleaning latrines for for toilets for some months now. What next?" He said, "No, there's no next. That's the that's the truth, right? <laughs> that's the way you were going to start getting there." 
It's because, you know, this is the currency in the spiritual realms. Well, you, and this is a great problem for some humanity nowadays. In Brazil, it's happening a lot. Most, many uh, medicine students, for example, have been uh, engaged in very serious situations, criminal situations, or even uh, suicidal situations, right? Because in that course, a course that deals with humans, they don't teach these kind of values, right? So it's, uh, it's very, it's dangerous for, so uh, one of the most dangerous courses nowadays for youngsters, I don't think you agree with me, maybe in Brazil has been medicine, yeah. right? One of the most dangerous for youngsters to get involved in bad situations, right? Because of this. Andy, please. Um, it just, uh, it makes me think of the verse in the Bible and I don't know what the verse is, but I bet Hyacinth, Hyacinth does. Um, the meek shall inherit the earth. Yes, <clears throat> that's right. And uh, I forgot to speak about the, the bonus. The bonus, ours, is a kind of money in Nosula, right? A kind of currency that, you know, as Nosula, as, uh, as is Castro City, is a city that is still in the lower zones, but in an intermediate, at an intermediate point, right? They have a very humane situation there. So people, they work and they get a kind of money with this bonus, hours, right? That uh, is a kind of uh, credit they've had for the hours they've been working there. And, uh, of course, they have the basic. Every, every citizen in Astro City has the basic things like uh, food, uh, housing, and things like that. But if the person wants to do something more, right, and to acquire something more, there is still this kind of bonus hours. Mm -hmm. And the explanation is a little bit more complex for us to speak about that here. But I think it's so interesting, right, because it's something very... Very smart, in my opinion. Yeah, it is because it is a uh, it is that philosophy of uh, compensation by merit, right? So um, everything that you do, there is a value to it. You have to work for it. If you want anything, you have to work for it. So it is 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 a very yes uh, 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 smart. Uh, um, and there's a dialogue between the minister and one woman that didn't didn't yeah. fit in any kind of jobs in Astral City, and this uh, he said something very strong to her. And she, first he said, "How many bon bonus hours do you have here?" He said she had just a few, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, "So you want to go back to Earth because you want to help your former son." But if you don't acquire right a congenial reaction for other other people's sympathy, how can you do something good if you don't do something good first? If you have no good networking, it's very hard for you to do this. this I like of... that. I like that bit of the story because she got so fed up with being told to correct her behavior that yeah. she left the whole area and, and then was found a year or two later sitting under a tree crying desperate uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, and then brought back and she said oh all right i'll listen now <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's the way it went unless i'm uh, mistaken yep yeah um yeah there are so many things that we can i mean like louise was saying it, the one hour is just not enough um i i can only imagine how difficult it was to, for the 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 productors uh, the folks working on this movie how to select exactly what to show and, and it must be oh. something overwhelming yeah i i don't want just to please my friends from the other countries here but I think Americans should, Americans should have made it, that movie, right? Because yeah. they have the expertise for that, and it would be wonderful. Uh, well, yes, our our movies here, they are, they, our industry they are, is not as experienced as the people from 
other countries like in the United States. I think it would be wonderful. For example, there's a book called 2000 Years Ago. Have you ever heard of it? I love this book. Yes, this book, let me tell you just as a short story. This book. <laughs> it's impossible, a short story. <laughs> yes, it's a, yes, it's a nutshell. This book, this book, we, we did that research about it. Remember, historic research about mm -hmm. that book. Mm -hmm. We did that research because there was a friend of ours who set up parties for Hollywood people, Hollywood. And she met the, uh, she met with the people of uh, Nicole Kidman's and uh, Clint Eastwood's team that had made that book that film the others. And they called me and said, Luis Sergio, please finish that translation of that book uh, uh, 2000 years ago. I was not doing the translation, but do that research, right? Because this team is going to make that film. They are waiting for the, this book to have an, an English translation. But before that, the woman who, who, who had been in touch with the team passed away, right? And then, we lost touch, Finish. and and then there was other uh, other complications that happened that I would only talk about that personally with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that's why. I, I, personally, I believe the the British folks they are the best story storytellers. I love when you know I, I see a story and and I see in the format you know uh, a British format I think they're the, yeah but anyway um it is what it is and what we have I'm glad that what we have we have it because it's out there for us to discuss and learn but um, oh yes wonderful I think I, I I got emotional because I never believed that I could see a spiritist movie like that, mm -hmm. right? It's so successful in our country. Uh, the point is the because I like studying those things. I once studied a lot about how to to write to to write a screenplay uh, and to adapt things. And we made some mistakes that are, not, in my opinion, this is very personal. That maybe uh, was something that we should you, you couldn't you sh shouldn't make that make those mistakes for. For the movie to be more spread out all over the world, but but okay, I I I loved it, right? Yeah. Um. All right. So so we talk about the bonus hours. Uh, friends that Andre Luis met in the Astro City. Um, Andre Luis he met um people that apparently he didn't know those people before, right? So that's the other question that I have for you, Luis. In your opinion, why exactly? Because in the book, even in the book, it doesn't say there is a connection like from previous lives or something like this between, for example, uh, Andre Luis and his friend, uh, Lysias. Um, is there any specific reason why those folks were selected to support Andre Luis in those first days? Yes. Uh, well, let's let's get uh, ourselves in their shoes. For example, some people in Nostal in Nostal City, they knew who Andre Luis was or had been before he became Andre Luis here on Earth. This is one point. That's why sometimes Andre Luis said, wow, I felt, felt so connected with that guy. And sometimes the guy is so mysterious about him, about things that, oh, okay, Andre Luis, you're going to do this, you're going to see. They can predict some things because some of them, in my opinion, they knew who Andre Luis had been before leaving Astro City and then coming back again. But on the other hand, there are also people who are uh, connect, had been connected, as we can see here in our reincarnation in Brazil, with the help of Chico Xavier, right? We are all connected somehow. Many of us, the, and in Osula, in, in Nostral City too, people like the, kind of the, the situation of uh, Ms. Laura. I think it was Laura, her name, right? And uh, she, you told us about that, uh, the other meeting, she started having some recollection from very 
far back reincarnations, right? And because of that, uh, she went to a, one, one department of treatment there, and she and her husband were invited to read their memories from 300 years before. She was so surprised about the information of the other reincarnations, right? That she was already starting to feel. And, and the point is, it was not enough for them to read their recollections. They had to go into a hands-on treatment, a magnetic treatment to start recovering their emotions. This is something that is very hard, right? Because one, one thing is to vision your past. The other thing is to vision your past and at the same time to start feeling all the things you still have inside, right? But they had to do this as a therapy. And uh, it was uh, amazing, the huge things that, that and it's we're going to go through because we don't remember everything just, right? With a click with our hand, oh, okay, I, I am discarnate now, so I will remember all my reincarnation. First, if you don't understand about reincarnation, you won't even believe that what you feel is related to other reincarnation. And many spirits don't even think about that, right? Mm -hmm. So things are more complex. And this, uh, I think all of them there are very, very well connected through many lives, but many yeah. lives. Right? Yeah. Yeah, possibly. And then we have um, his Andre Luis family. Um, if you remember Andre Luis, he was not allowed, even though he could remember, that's another thing. Andre Luis could remember his family. And uh, based on uh, other books that uh, we have available, this is not a rule for everybody. Sometimes we, depending on the way that we transition, sometimes we remember, sometimes we do not remember the same way like Andre Luis remember his family. He could remember everybody. So, but he was not allowed to, to see, to meet them. He was not, first, he was not in condition to, to do that. And second, um, eight years has passed. So the incarnated folks, they moved on with their lives and Andre Luis not, was not quite ready to face that reality. <laughs> and when he does, then there is a surprise because in the book, it says that even his name was not mentioned in the house. Yes. So can you... Can you imagine what it is for you to go back to the place you think, you know, everybody is still thinking of you, missing you, et cetera. But in his own household, not even his name was mentioned. Nobody was with it. And, and um, so it was a shock, right, uh, for him. Uh, also, uh, he was, uh, at some point he was missing his mother, but, uh, evidently his mother was, uh, not in Nastral City. She was a higher being. She was in a, you know, more elevated, uh, realm. And, uh, for her, it was not so easy to be in Astral City, even though Astral City is a nice place, but uh, she was in such a higher realm that for her, it was to dance reality, if you will. So it was not so easy for her to stay there, right, uh, Luis? Yes. Uh, this point of, um, of remembering things and uh, the ambience, I have seen some chapters of some episodes of a series on Netflix called Manifest. I don't know if, if mm -hmm. any well, one of you has yeah. seen it called Manifest. And uh, this movie is a plane that everybody thought had crashed into the ocean and nobody survived. But five years later, 
there, the, the passengers came to the airport and everybody was alive. But this, for the passengers, uh, these five years had not passed at all. They were just, they just had finished their, their trip. But uh, for everyone else, it was five years. And it's the same situation. Andre Luis was psychologically, for him, we don't know, maybe a shorter time in the spirit realms and the lower zones, but actually for us was eight years. And then he went to a spiritual city and then he stayed there for some time, maybe nine years later, he comes back and thinking about uh, finding everybody just the same way that he left them in the past. And it, of course, didn't happen. His wife was in a second marriage with another person. So people, we are talking about 1940s. So the traditional people, she wouldn't be able to go on repeating the name of her ex-husband all the time, her late husband. No, on the other hand, or on the contrary, she said, no, people, she said to her children, don't mention him here. We cannot talk about him anymore and so on. Of course, it hurt his feelings very much. Uh, the truth we're going to face after we transition can be so hard for us to stand that many spirits get almost crazy when they start, you know, fooling around and discovering what exactly people really thought about them, what exactly things really happened so much so that I remember in another book called Sex and Destiny by Chico Xavier and Andre Luis, there was a woman that was very nice, a very nice spirit, but she was kind of uh, disobedient. It's, and her instructor, her spiritual instructor, advised her not to come here to see her family soon after she had discarnate. And she insisted on that. He said, oh, okay, you're free to go, go. And when she came here, first and foremost, she found her house inhabited by monsters, spiritual monsters. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was so terrible for her to see this spiritual plight in which her family had been, that she just had a, a nervous breakdown. She was taken to a spiritual realm again to, to do a psychotherapy and to do a, a past life therapy regression mm -hmm. for her to understand why uh, all, this, all that drama uh, came to that point so yeah, that's yeah and um, exactly and uh, because of that surprise shocking news and uh, um, facing the reality so um, I guess the main the main message in this book is really this humbleness lesson that Andre Luis left, you know, because at the end of the day, he's mentioning in the book, he's saying, you know, nobody's going to ask you uh, upon your arrival what professional, what profession you had, you know, how many titles, how many assets, etc. But what exactly have you left in each other, you know, somebody else's heart? So how many how many times you happen, you know, so you happen to help somebody else. So, so that's, that's the main, uh, Andre Luis is constantly calling attention to uh, where exactly our focus uh, should be, right? Uh, again, humbleness lesson. That's uh, over here, I'm just putting, you know, um, in general, but mostly in Astro City, but what is here is all those uh, books and from uh, the series of the spiritual realm. Andrea Luis is giving us a lesson about uh, humbleness. You know, all his books were written anonymously. He was so proud of who he was when he was alive, but at the end of the day, Putting these books together, he used to uh, write like a user code name. He also is calling our uh, attention to change our destiny while we are still here. And he is even saying, turn on your lights before crossing the great shadow. 
seek the truth before the truth surprises you. Like Luis was saying, sweat now so you won't cry later. That's, that's uh, uh, high sense, please. Yes, as I understand it, it's easier to make the correction in this life than in the next. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Hyacinth, I totally agree. Um, when you say easier, it means um, it's still difficult, but things carry much more weight in this life than they do in the other. The thought, word, and deed series um, packs a real punch in incarnations, which is the whole point of having incarnations. I agree with you. Thank you, Giles. Uh, Luis, please. Yes, do you remember that uh, Catholic nun was here in my house? She used, yeah. to study, she used to study Spiritism with me. She I likes love. studying Spiritism. And, and she said, we Catholics, we have an advantage over you. So why? What's the advantage? We have only one life to be saints. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and you write your lazy bones, everything. Yeah, we have a lot of incarnations. I said, it's not like that, right? <laughs> it's not like that. We know that one era incarnation, just like Giles said right now, is so important for us. And every missed opportunity can have a heavy, heavy load, can be a heavy load in our shoulders, right? That was, she's right. I remember when I was eight years old, I remember having this kind of thoughts that I would like to be the president of Brazil. Don't ask me why I had this terrible idea. But at some point, when I was at nine, I convinced myself that it was okay not being the president of Brazil this time because I could be it another time. By the way, my family was Catholic. Nobody was talking to me about many lives. I have no idea why those ideas were in my mind, but, but it, they were. So uh, continue over here. So Andrea is also in the Astro City book. He's talking about the importance of us to educate and enlighten ourselves while we are still here, while we still have time. Yeah. Uh, so he's saying that only by learning, uh, he could escalate to uh, more opportunities to help. And by assisting and helping others, he could uh, advance and overcome his own conflicts, right? So he also calls attention to uh, the fact that we should acquire balance and discernment. So if we want to advance, we have to observe discipline uh, and keep our heart and our mind in constant balance. Keep our reasoning and our emotions in constant balance so we do not find ourselves deceived so easily like he, he did. Um, and evidently, apparent life versus intimate life. So he lived the whole time like so concerned about status, about society, what everybody could think of him, you know, spotless life, but not knowing that it was his intimate life. It was exactly his spiritual life leading uh, or driving his, his journey, right? So, um, and then there is this guy, Euripides Bassanufo, one day we'll talk about this guy, but he's a very important guy for the spiritism in Brazil. He says, first, let's be good. Then let's be happy. I mean, as happiness, a consequence of all the goodness that we uh, we did, right? Hi, Saint, please. <clears throat> yes, in <clears throat> Helen Green's book about you know the the afterlife, where she was, um, she had been a nun for twenty five years, and she had left and was a teacher. And when she passed uh, and she was um, 
welcoming people on the other side. That was she had um, uh, volunteered to do. There's a 12 year old child who passed. And so when she came as we were talking and she said, you know, that 12 year old is going to progress faster than I. I had been a religious for 25 years and I hadn't got it right. Wow. This child was far ahead of me. So. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's very powerful. All right, folks. So this is the, the end of the, the discussion on Astro City. I will go ahead and stop the recording.